Today on Engine Power, we start the build of a 557-inch Ford Big Block and tear up the track with the Sweepstakes Power Stop Z06. Welcome to Engine Power. Today, we're gonna to be giving you big block fans another dose of race engine how-to, and this time around, it's for all of you Ford fanatics who have a soft spot for the old 385 series here, which are the 429 and 460 power plants. A few weeks ago, we built a 572 cubic inch big block Chevy from bits and pieces laying around the shop. The block received some in-house cleanup work, which included jazzing up the finish on the cylinder walls and lifter bores, plus deburring it so it was easier to handle. Once assembled, we secured it to the run stand and tested two different intake manifolds and concluded with 750 horsepower woo, on 93 octane pump gas. Today, we're doing a similar build on an old 460 block we had laying in the hallway. It's going to receive Eagle's Competition 557 cubic inch rotating assembly, a set of 325 power port heads from TrickFlow along with their R-Series manifold. Feeding it is a single 1150 Dominator from Holly, and once we get all of our NA numbers, we're going to spray it with a big shot of nitrous. Our build started by taking this block to Shacklett's automotive machine in Nashville, Tennessee. John Shacklett put the super tune to it for us by boring and honing with torque plates the bore 80 over for a final bore size of 4440. He also nailed it when he set the decks up and got them within a half thousandth of each other. The block came back to us super clean and ready to paint, so if you need precision work done, he's the man to see. These blocks are a lot stronger than most realize. They're very popular not only in drag racing, but in mud trucks and the marine industry as well. The great thing about them is how easy they are to make a stroker out of. There's no grinding or clearancing needed for strokes up to 4,500, and the Chevy boys can't make that claim. The bores can handle 80 thousandths over with ease and with some sonic checking up to 110 over, and in stock form, the block height on these are taller than a tall deck big block Chevy at 10 inch 322 thousandths. These have been known to handle up to 1,000 horsepower and last while doing so. The 460's oiling system is similar to that of a 351 Cleveland, meaning it oils the passenger side lifter bank before it oils the mains. But that will be sufficient for us in the RPM range and the power level that we're going to have. A little radius work and light deburring on the drain backs will satisfy our needs. Like we mentioned on previous builds, only light pressure is needed. Let the bird do the work. We'll use a cartridge roll to smooth out the grinding areas even more. What we're looking for are smooth transitions and nothing to cut yourself on. The same treatment was given to the oil filter boss. No matter how much or how little grinding you do, it's still grinding. So a final wash is necessary. During the wash cycle, our new Axe Equipment ES40 engine stand with optional drip pan showed up. Now the cylinders are ready to be cleaned. Using automatic trans fluid, wipe them in a circular pattern until no gray residue comes out. This is one of the most important parts of the prep process to ensure the rings seat properly. With the saddles clean, we can lay in our high performance King main bearings. They're included with the Eagle rotating kit. Our clearances have all been checked and we are in the good. Three thousandths to three and a half thousandths on the mains. Like always, we'll use a high viscosity assembly lube on the bearings. The rear main seal goes in offset to avoid leaks at the parting line. Going in the block now is an Eagle 4340 forged steel crank with a four 500 stroke. It's internally balanced, has micropolis journals and weighs 82 pounds. With the bearing and lube filled caps dropping into place, followed by the main girdle with ARP main bolts, the final step for the crank is to torque it in to 100 pound feet. We'll be right back. Coming up, a rotating assembly worthy of big power.
Our 557 inch big block Ford build continues. The crank is in and the mains are torqued up, so next up are the rod and piston assemblies. Now the connecting rods are Eagle's forged 4340H beams that have a 6700 center to center length. The caps are held down by ARP's 8740 rod bolts. These will take way more power than we're going to throw at them. The piston is Molly's forged with a 38cc dish and a single valve relief and they're phosphate coated. They're protected from dry startup with their anti-friction coating on the skirt. They're set up for a 16th, 16th, 3mm ring pack and all of this came from Eagle. With the rings installed and the assemblies lubed, they're ready to fill the bores. The same process as usual, take your time and use a little finesse. If something doesn't feel right, it's not. Don't risk breaking a ring to get the job done fast. Underneath, the cap is snugged up. Bearing clearances are between 2.4 and 2.7 across the journals. All caps will get final torqued after all of them are in. Using ARP's ultra torque on the rod bolts, they get torqued to 63 foot pounds. This is the half crankshaft speed rotating valve actuator, or as you know it, the camshaft. It's a solid roller that's an engine power exclusive. We spec'd it out specifically for this build to complement that big hit of nitrous. We wish we could show you the specs, but it's a secret grind. Just kidding. Here's the Camcore part number, 34-000-9. And the serial number comp keeps on file so you can call and order this cam. The grind number is the load profile out of the comp catalog, and with all that info, you can order your cam identical to this. Gross lift is 763 thousandths on the intake, 773 on the exhaust. Duration at 50 is 266 on the intake, 278 on the exhaust. And the lobe separation is 114 degrees. The cam retaining plate is next, followed by the double row timing set. Now I'll degree the cam. I'm installing it straight up at 114 degrees. The timing cover goes on along with a balancer spacer. Originally, it was a counterweight, but since the crank is internally balanced, that's not needed. And a Mazir backing plate since we're running one of their pumps on the dyno. To finish off our oiling system modifications, the oil filter adapter also needed a little attention. Without beveling this area of the adapter, all the mods we did wouldn't help much. It had a flat edge leading to the hex, so this 45 degree bevel removed the restriction and opened up some area. An ARP oil pump shaft and John Kazi oil pump will guarantee we will have efficient oiling throughout the oil galleries. To increase idle and high RPM oil pressure, it has dual feeds to the rotors. ARP studs will secure it to the block. The pickup is next and is a match for the next part to go on. Laying next to the block in the hallway was a seven quart oil pan that has a nine inch rear sump to keep more oil around the pickup to avoid oil starvation problems. And to keep windage under control, it has this nice bolt in windage screen. This gasket has compression stops letting us know when it's tight and more ARP fasteners will cinch it down. When tightening the pan, work from the center out. Up front and wrapping up the bottom end for today is a Powerbond 18.1 SFI balancer. This is their Ray series. It's tested to 21,000 RPM without failure and our CNC machine. We'll finish this build up next time. We're headed out to show you how a previous project car will perform and trust me, you don't want to miss it. Before we put this PowerStop Ultimate Z06 sweepstakes car through the paces, here's how it all started. PowerStop Brakes used this car to develop their one-click track kit for the Z06 platform. Then we were asked to modify and prep it for a sweepstakes giveaway. Our premise was to build an older Z06 that could compete with the amazing new 2015 one for half the cost. Now we tore the driveline from the engine back out of the car. That was to access and remove a transmission that had some issues with first gear. A direct Tremec replacement went in. At this time, we installed a new flywheel and clutch and JBA long tube headers. With all the new, the driveline was reassembled. Now we're ready for the product that made this build possible. It's a one-click track kit for Z06 Corvettes. It uses cross-drilled and slotted rotors. The pads are a semi-metallic compound ideal for track day applications. 
This is for all you autocrossers and open trackers looking for a little advantage. Now we had the factory wheels powder coated matte black to give the car a little sinister look. They were wrapped in Continental Extreme Contact DWs, which stands for dry wet. The second phase of the build was all about adding power and we got that with an Edelbrock E4 supercharger designed for the LS7. The install was straightforward and can be handled by two guys over a weekend's time. Now because of our long tube headers, we needed a custom tune. Greg Lovell from Anti-Venom Performance was our choice and truly showed his skills. In four runs, we were done. This thing is track ready, so we're headed to one of our favorite places in Kentucky. If you don't recognize this building behind me, well, you're not a car guy. We're back at the National Corvette Museum in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and we're here to pay off our Power Stop Ultimate Z06 sweepstakes giveaway car at the museum's track next door. But before we do that, we're gonna go inside and check out what's new. And the first room you enter is nothing but new. It's the staging area for the purchased 2015 Corvettes, all waiting for their new owners. And from the looks of it, sales are good. This room is called the nursery. No drooling allowed and just a few feet away is a huge step back in time. It's a place to reminisce the past, relive dreams, with realistic scenes mirroring Corvette's early history, from the pride of ownership to the thrill of the checkered flag. It's also a place to kindle a new passion in the next generation of Corvette lovers. Greg Dibsey and son from New Jersey have a head start on that. The American sports car. It's, uh... There's just nothing better, nothing faster, nothing cooler. I find them to just be very insanely beautiful and there's just nothing that can compete with it, not even a Mustang. If you're a Corvette person, it's just, wow, you walk in and you're just amazed. It's just, you know, from the minute you walk in, you see the nursery for the, for the brand new Corvettes. And, you know, you hear one fire up. And it's, it's, it's just like music to your ears. <laughs> it's definitely a cool place. Since opening in 1994, Corvette enthusiasts travel here from all over the world. In fact, the museum draws well over 100,000 visitors each year and growing. It's the only facility of its kind in the United States dedicated to a single model. Each car is in the same condition as it arrived, except for the victims of the infamous sinkhole. Now, I know what you're thinking. If you're worried about your safety, I'm going to check it out for you. It's good. And it's time to cross the highway to the National Corvette Museum's Motorsports Park to see if we can create any history with our modified PowerStop Z06. Stay with us. We're back at a familiar track. We've been here before. The last time you were here, we were was early on. I think we had just opened, and we've actually done more than you probably even noticed. Marking the corners, corner stations, brake markers. We've added some additional track out curbing. You know, basically when people start running on it, we see where they're running off their track. So we've, we've been able to, uh, to take some lessons from that. And today is going to get a little tricky. Another new addition for us, it's starting to rain. But we're continuing on. There are a few things that need to be adjusted. The most important, our driving style. Now it's going to take some finesse on the wheel and throttle control. Now remember, this thing makes over 520 pound-feet of torque at 2500 RPM. That's going to take some getting used to. Now it's going to take a few laps to find out how the car really handles, but right off the bat, we can tell these Continental DWs are up to the task. They hold tight in the corners, and the same under hard braking. I only finished a couple of laps and I'm already impressed at this Z06 upgrade. The trans is tight with solid shifts and the Edelbrock supercharger has very quick response and great power whenever asked for. Now this thing along with a professionally designed track quickly builds up a driver's confidence and that's when mistakes can happen. So we'll wait out this shower for a safer track and hand the wheel to John Namira, Power Stop's product manager. He was a big part of their testing at Bondurant 
and the formula and the brake pads. We added 200 foot-pounds of torque and about 150 horsepower to this vehicle, and these brakes are holding up exactly the way we designed them to. The modulation is perfect. You know exactly what the vehicle is going to do as soon as you hit that brake pedal. I'm extremely proud of the job we've done engineering this brake system. When we started this project, our goal was to make it perform equal or a little better than the new 2015 Z06. So the only way to compare that was to bring one. The driver is our editorial director, Jim Camposano. He's tested and reviewed high performance cars in national magazines for what seems like over a hundred years. We're not full out racing, but we are pushing it a little. Now it's a bit intimidating to see the new Corvette behind me, but I soon realize it's a pretty fair matchup, except for the weight difference. The 2015 is at 3528. Our modified 2008 is at 3177. So far, I'm keeping Jim at bay, but the rain has returned. I have logged several hours on this track this year. Jim hasn't had the laps to get familiar with it. And here's how you learn. And here's how a pro gets out of it. He kept it on the track surface, out of the grass, and most importantly, out of the tire barrier. He's coming back with a vengeance, but it's clear we met our goal. As great as this car is, I thought I was gonna come here today and say, wow, if we can build anything that's close to what this car is. And that blue car, the Power Stop Corvette, just walked away from this car, which is no mean feat. This is one of the top performance cars of the, in the world, regardless of price, and we beat it handily. One more test. We hit the cones at 30 miles an hour in second gear, then nail it. The new car makes 650, 650 at the flywheel. We made 594, 593 at the tires. And there you have it. And it could be yours by signing up for the sweepstakes at powerstop.com. If you have a coil-on-plug ignition system in your vehicle, Excel has a super coil ignition coil for you. These fit 2.4, 2.7, and 4-liter Toyota 4- and 6-cylinder engines. They have 15% more spark energy than the OEs, have better throttle response and fuel mileage, plus they only take about an hour to install. They're a factory direct replacement, so they work with all the sensors, and you can get a set for a 4-cylinder from Summit Racing for around 180 bucks. If you run Optima batteries like we do, here's some really cool information you should know. They've extended their product line to include high performance battery chargers for AGM batteries. Now this thing is designed to maintain, recharge, and replenish deeply drained AGM batteries. Now it has a fully lit LCD back screen that displays battery life and fill rate. Plus on the side, this thing will also juice up devices like iPhones and digital cameras. Now here's something really cool. If you buy the charger and the battery together, Optima will extend the warranty on the battery by one full year. Now the price on the charger by itself is $199.99. Log on to OptimaBatteries.com to find a dealer near you. If you're the new owner of a 2015 Mustang GT, here's an exhaust system you need to know about. It's Hooker's Blackheart Catback system made out of 304 stainless steel. The pipe size is three inches and it even includes an X-pipe. The mufflers are a high flow straight through design that have an aggressive exhaust note on acceleration but a mellow tone at idle and the entire system is 100% hand MIG welded and you can pick yours up at Summit Racing for under 1100 bucks. Well we hope you enjoyed the show, we'll see you next time.